Memes are undoubtedly one of the pinnacles of the internet. They evolved from these well-constructed, clever gags in the early 1900s to basically, this makes no sense, yet I can't stop laughing. Another pinnacle of the internet is gaming. Chances are, if you're a gamer, you're probably a memer as well. There are many instances of memes coming from video games, such as Sus from Among Us, Wasted from GTA, and of course, the iconic goof sound from Roblox. Again. Oh. Speaking of Roblox, it's a self-labeled imagination platform, meaning you can make whatever you want on it. Due to this, some people have begun to push the boundaries by uploading funny, edgy things in an attempt to be unique, and surprisingly, things like these dominate Roblox. In this video, we'll be looking at the evolution of Roblox memes, looking at five different eras of meme games, starting with the prehistoric era. Chapter 1, The Prehistoric Era Roblox as we know it was launched on September 1st, 2006, and attracted a few thousand players in the months that followed after its creation. Games on the platform would come in as did players, albeit very slowly, causing many of the first well-known games on Roblox to be developed by their staff. This was most likely due to the fact that Lua, the coding language used in Roblox Studio, was relatively unknown in the mid-2000s, as more people knew how to code using languages like Python or JavaScript. But that wasn't necessary, seeing as what the games lacked in code was made up in creativity, as most of the first popular games on Roblox featured spectacular building skills. Eventually, good games were created, such as Natural Disaster Survival and Work at a Pizza Place. Over time, people would start to prefer better scripted games over better built ones. That's not to say low-effort games weren't popular, which is where these Roblox memes originated. Originated. Around late 2008, a style of game popped up that we'll call the Who Killed Games. In these games, there was an obby. At the start of the obby, you would have someone tell you to find who killed said person, and after completing the obby, you would find out who killed them. These games would feature a variety of characters, ranging from Sonic to Peter Griffin, making these games even more memeable in the future. But moving away from games, the old community was even more memorable, as there are some pretty popular Roblox videos from the late 2000s that are classified as memes today. I'm sure that videos like these weren't meant to be meme material, but low quality or old looking videos are a hit in meme culture, and it's the reason why YouTubers like Cooper2723 are so popular. There were also a few old Roblox assets that were later made into memes, such as the baller meme, which originated from a character you could play in the 2013 Roblox game Boss Fighting Stages Rebirth. To sum everything up from this era, most of these memes originated from nostalgia and simplicity, but most of the things that are memes today weren't back then. But let's move on to the next era. Let's fast forward to the mid 2010s, with Roblox having a sizable player base, as well as memes evolving, being out of the standard impact text phase. This was the era when a style of memes arose called MLG, which was basically a bunch of memes added over a regular video in an epileptic manner. Of course, these memes would make their way onto Roblox, with games like MLG Tycoon created in 2016 and having over 3 million visits. Among other popular meme games were games like When You Are Just Right, which was based on the, you guessed it, Just Right meme. The game has over half a million visits, even though the only thing you get out of the game is a still frame image of your Roblox character in the just right position. Speaking of which, in 2015, an image of a frog riding a unicycle popped up in an image sharing site Tumblr, and it soon became widespread throughout the internet. This prompted Roblox user Q underscore Q, developer of the extremely popular Roblox game The Neighborhood of Robloxia, to make a game on the meme, possibly trying to capitalize off of its popularity. This game also did very well, even managing to get featured in a Roblox tweet, which is arguably more memeable than those two previous games. Funnily enough, the subreddit I found this on was r slash fellow kids, possibly theorizing that this tweet was the result of Roblox trying to be trendy. Moving on, another thing that popped up during this era was Tycoons, which featured iconic soundtracks that were pretty memeable, as well as iconic sound bites such as Chessburger, Pizza, and who could forget Nom Nom Nom. If you join Roblox during this era, there's a good chance it's your favorite. Everything was simplistic, probably reflecting players' lives during those times. This also means people who joined after this era will still jump on the same bandwagon, possibly to have some feeling of inclusivity, but in the end, they just get memed on. This would also lead to the rise of now popular Roblox YouTubers who mainly base their humor on basic jokes and gags, attracting new players. However, the people who played Roblox blocks before it blew up and were more mature at someone else to turn to, a more, dare I say, edgy individual who took a part in shaping Roblox meme culture. In this next chapter slash era, we'll examine how this individual managed to do this while building a cult-like following in the process. It's Earthworm Sally, cure diseases from Florida to Cali. 
There's this Roblox YouTuber who grows insanely popular due to his edginess and cussing that is unseen in any other creator in that niche. However, his edginess causes him to get the yellow dollar sign, and he's on the verge of being homeless. He creates another channel, gets rid of his excessive swearing, and tones down the edginess a bit to maximize revenue. The person I'm referring to is Albert Aretz, known in the Roblox space as Flamingo. The content on Flamingo was catered towards kids, but instead of the gimmick being that he was playful, silly, and goofy, Albert took more of a wacky approach. Albert used to have a strange voice and since it's hard to describe what it sounded like, I'll let you be the judge. Flamingo is just one of those weird seagull things. If you're seeing this video, you're probably not subscribed yet. Get my point? Remember how I mentioned earlier that Albert built a cult-like following? The main way he would do this was by creating these trademarks that only his community would understand. There are different ones for each year. In 2017, it was Yo Tango. In 2018, it was Green Screen Man, Cletus, and Earthworm Sally. In 2019, it would be Sue Tart. And how could I forget Still Chill? And even though Flamingo was a huge part of Roblox meme culture during this era, we'll have to move away from him for a bit. This is because, on December 31st, 2017, an image of a very cursed looking Roblox avatar resembling a spider popped up on Imager, being labeled the Despacito Spider due to its chat message. This simple image has become a staple in Roblox meme culture, and aged well due to the rise of cursed Roblox avatars today. There was also the Roblox Oof sound, which had been around before the release of Roblox but became a meme when Roblox grew tremendously. But going back to Flamingo, in early 2019, he happened to stumble upon the game Sad Story, created by PopcornLady1238. In his video playing the game, we saw the sad story of Sutart, as the story was about the bullying he faced. The story had a good end however, as Sutar managed to resolve its conflicts. The game quickly became widespread throughout the Flamingo fandom, as fans began to make their own renditions of the game, featuring misspellings and bad grammar. This would give Flamingo a near-endless supply of content, as he made more videos on sad stories in Sutar, ultimately strengthening his cult-like fanbase. At one point, the impact of Sutar was big enough that certain games based around him made the front page of Roblox, with hundreds of people playing these games. Flamingo had taken a regular, crappy story and proceeded to make it bigger than anyone had imagined. This annoyed some people, but for the most part, the games were controversy-free. Roblox user BNXDJ compiled some of Flamingo's best memes into the game The Chill Elevator, where on every floor there were various different Flamingo memes and references, among others. But as we finally move away from the Sue Tart saga, let's move to another YouTuber. Burr. Burr, as a lot of you know, is the popular Roblox YouTuber known for his highly edited funny moments videos. But before he blew up insanely doing that, Burr used to create Roblox music videos and gained a decent subscriber base by doing so. These videos would consume his channel for over three years, and I think it's safe to say that Burr wanted to do something new. This is why on July 20th, 2019, Burr uploaded Roblox memes, a compilation of all these wacky memes that he had made relating to Roblox. And if you thought the Roblox meme market was fairly small back then, you would be dead wrong, as this video has accumulated a view count of over 20 million. Burr, after seeing the huge success of this video, went to work on a second. These videos were super high quality, and creating one in a small time frame would certainly be ambitious. So Burr's fanbase patiently waited. Luckily, during the time before his second video, there would be significant Roblox meme material, provided by none other than Roblox themselves. On August 15th, 2019, Roblox released the UGC catalog, where if you got accepted into the UGC program, you had the ability to make your own 3D clothing, provided that it was appropriate. This caused an influx of meme-like items to be uploaded to the catalog, with notable ones such as Tonk and the Despacito Spider, which had a resurgence during this time. Even Flamingo hopped in on the action, creating the Albert head, which was a model of his own head that he had deformed in Blender. And while this head was never officially released, he teamed up with his friend Dysoft to create the Felipe head, which as a lot of you know, is a huge part of the Flamingo verse. Burr came out with Roblox Memes 2 in September, which didn't garner as many views as the first, but still at a big 10 million. Burr's third memes video which he released in December would be the biggest of the three, having over 23 million views. This was his last installation in the series as he would move on to greener pastures in the Roblox gameplay niche, but he made sure to incorporate memes into these videos to please fans. Burr continues to be a staple in Roblox meme culture today, having an active fanbase of over 4 million. But let's move away from Burr once again, because the decade has turned and it's now 2020, and Roblox has another surprise in store, quite literally. On August 6, 2020, Roblox released the meme pack, which was a set of physical Roblox memes that were in stores like Walmart and Target for the price of $34.99. Among these memes were the Despacito Spider and Buff Noob, with sets including a virtual code to get the Buff Noob bundle for free. All jokes aside, it was pretty cool to see Roblox embrace their meme core player base, and this attempt was far less cringe than their previous one half a decade back. This unforgettable Roblox meme era is capped off by the Flamingo Junkbot raid, where Albert raided games like To Hood with hundreds of thousands of junk bots, who spammed incantations such as oil or boil. But that's the end of this very long era, so let's move on to the next.
On the very last day of 2020, a Roblox game goes into development by the name of Get a Snack at 4am. The game was originally made to be the sequel of a previous installation, Get a Snack at 3am, which had mixed success. The only difference between this game and its predecessor is that you were confined to a house compared to a town, as well as having significantly lower quality than the latter. When the sequel was released, it appeared that it was going to be a relatively unsuccessful game just like the prequel, but in April, it found its saving grace. Flamingo Slash Albert has a habit of turning unknown Roblox games into hit sensations, most games that Flamingo plays in his videos will hit the front page the following day. Flamingo happened to stumble upon Get a Snack at 4am and thought it would be a good candidate for a video, possibly because of its uniqueness. On April 17th, 2021, Flamingo uploaded a video playing the game when it only had around 100,000 visits. Little did Albert know that he uploaded one of the most iconic Roblox videos of the last few years, as it paved the way for many other meme games to come. As you can expect, after Flamingo played the game, it immediately took off. Within hours of his video, the game had a few thousand players and had quadrupled its visit count. Flamingo wasn't the only YouTuber who played this game. A few days after Flamingo's video, Sketch chimed in with his, and then after 8-Bit Ryan and Remainings. This popularity would kickstart the 3, 4, 5am game trend on Roblox, albeit these parody games were made a few months after the original's blow up. But Get a Snack at 4am's blow up showed Roblox game developers one thing, edgy games were starting to be allowed on Roblox. In the late 2010s, there were basically no Roblox games that tried to push the boundaries or featured inappropriate themes, except <clears throat> but ever since then, people have been testing the waters with insanely weird games, and since none are getting banned, they progressively got weirder. An example of this is in 2021, Robloxians were completely taken aback by Get a Snack at 4am, but today, uncanny games like Don't Get Sniffed are the norm. But we'll wait until early 2022 when most of these Get a Snack clones pour in. Notable mentions include games such as Do Your Chores and Get a Drink at 3am. The success of this trend was overshadowed by a particular Roblox face, too. Actually, the winning smile face became a meme due to its creepiness, even getting its own game Infectious Smile, which has nearly a billion visits. Pretty crazy. The man face became iconic enough to get its own mug, which you've probably seen in a lot of Roblox videos. I even bought my own. Pretty swag, not gonna lie. Moving away, you may also remember that in mid-2022, many people filmed videos of them being chased by an uncanny version of Barack Obama on the hit game Gary's Gmod. Videos like these were instantly a hidden meme culture, and it's only appropriate that someone would make a Roblox rendition as well. This would lead to the creation of games like Evade and Nico's Nextbots. Contrary to popular belief, Evade was created before Nico's Next spots. It's just that Nico's next spots blew up before Evade did. These games featured characters like Obunga among others, as well as both instantly taking off upon release. But once again, we're going to backpedal, as there is another meme Roblox developers are capitalizing on, the backrooms. Now, don't get me wrong, there are really good backrooms games such as Aperiophobia, but then we get to games like Strike in the Backrooms, which kinda sours the whole niche. Either way, when this cursed game was released in May 2022, it was an instant hit among Robloxians, garnering over 300 million visits. Sad Sadly, this glory is interrupted by the loss of a very great Roblox meme. On July 27th, 2022, Roblox unfortunately removed the oof sound from the game due to copyright issues. The sound was replaced by a more monotone sound, which did get memed on, but not necessarily in a good way. While this instance was pretty sad, it's made up by the fact that the rest of this year for Roblox would be chock full of memes. And this will lead us into our final era and the present day, where a certain Roblox group is the main source of eminence. On March 3rd, 2021, a Roblox game by the name Spellbound Wizard RPG was uploaded by a group appropriately titled The Spellbound Team. The game was like Wizard 101 but inside Roblox, which was certainly a unique idea. Anyways, the game had little success commercially, with its high being the fact that popular Roblox YouTuber DV Plays played the game on his second channel. Still, there is a decent sized player base for the game, which keeps the team busy for around 18 months until they get an idea. Now, I'm not sure exactly what idea they had, but it was probably something like, let's make a game so stupid, it's good. Or, what are the limits of Roblox's TOS? Like I said, we don't know, but what we do know is that the Spellbound team rebranded themselves, changing their name, as well as introducing their debut meme game, Make Memes in Your Basement at 3am, on October 22nd, 2022. The game was in development for only 6 days before being officially released, and it seemed very promising from the get-go, garnering well over 100 concurrent players. This appeared to be the game team's big break. They had a thriving game that would only keep on growing, and could have long-term success as long as they made good updates. 
minutes. However, what happened next would catapult the game into complete stardom. On November 3rd, 2022, Sketch happened to stumble upon Make Memes at 3am when it had less than 100,000 visits. Seeing the potential, he played the game in his video, which, as I described earlier, catapulted the game into complete stardom. Within 24 hours, the game had over 2,000 people playing it, and a week later had gotten so popular that even Flamingo played the game, boosting its popularity even more. The game hit its peak on November 12th with over 34,000 concurrent users, as the game slowly started to die after that. But instead of trying to capitalize even further on the game by updating it and trying to keep it alive, the team had the idea to create yet another meme game. So that's why sometime in mid-November during their previous game's massive hype, they put out another makes game calls to save your best friend. This time, the game would be picked up by Flamingo first, and the day after his video was uploaded on November 18th, the game had well over 5,000 players. Then they would make another meme game, which again went viral, and then another, same thing, and soon the group grew to be one of the biggest game enterprises on Roblox. Of course, this would result in people trying to copy their game style, with the famous instance being make Roblox games to become rich and famous. But on the other hand, you had people in the same genre with enough courage to make their own unique meme games, such as Dig to China. The year turns and it is now 2023. Nothing too special happens, more meme games get uploaded, but the real action happens in April. This is because on April 5th, Roblox added UGC limiteds, which were basically regular limiteds, but uploaded by the player base. This on its own wasn't very important, and it wouldn't be for another 4 months, but we'll get to that later. But what is important is the fact that Roblox Sad Stories became a hit the following month, usually accompanied by a cover of DJ Sammy's Heaven created by TikToker Chris Hoffish. Uh, 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 uh. We're in heaven. Ah! As with most memes, this died pretty quickly, but it was quite interesting to see the Roblox sad story memes continue. Back to UGC, in early August, Roblox allowed anyone who verified their ID to have access to upload UGCs. This would end up being a terrible mistake in the long run, but hey, we got good memes out of it. Roblox UGC always had a moderation problem. It was bad enough with thousands of creators, and now they were opening the doors for tens of thousands of creators to upload their creations. Not to mention the fact that uploading a fake ID for verification was pretty easy, as some people were able to get away with uploading ID such as Spongebob and McLovin's. And once this change was put into place, memes were created instantly. You may remember that Roblox added profile pictures, so people would upload 2D models solely to get a cool profile picture. And then there was that trend where poorly made faces of famous people were uploaded to the catalog, strengthening UGC's meme status. And now apparently uploading copies of expensive Roblox items is permitted. Not a meme, but a bit wacky. Roblox is indeed an imagination platform, and some people have weird ideas, which has led to the creation of most of these memes. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed as this is my most tedious project yet. I will see all of you in the next video.